my shooting, you know, have, have confidence going out and uh, shoot, shooting that shot, you know, um, if they, if they respected my shot more, you know, we probably would have been going through what we did all season, you know, instead of the big playing back off me, you know, would, would play like how it was during the season. So that would have helped us a lot. Um, developing chemistry with our shooters in situations when teams are going to play us or try and take away A and B from us, you know, we have to have an option ready. And then um, obviously defense working on that, you know, getting in shape more, you know, being able to sustain. I feel like we grew a lot during this playoff series um, with our defense. And if we can sustain that during the year, that's going to help us a lot. DeMontis Sabonis right there, uh, again, courtesy of Matt George. As we welcome in uh, our good buddy, our 1320 Kings insider, James Ham, fresh from uh, those very media interviews. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question that I feel like I ask all of the time. I figured out my crutch. Like, you've got the the, the $2 steak mm. and make no bones about it. Yeah, yeah. And I've got the, James, what stands out <laughs> about... Uh, <laughs> the last few hours talking to the Sacramento Kings. First of all, it's really hard to process video on your phone when they just keep bringing more and more people out. <laughs> right. So uh, they did a really good job of, of flipping through the guys today. Uh, we had nine different players come through. I think we'll have Coach and uh, Monty McNair next week at some point. Oh, very good. Um, yeah, so we're going to keep getting more and more like sort of content here as, a, as the days and, and weeks go by. Uh, the biggest takeaway, um, I did ask Keegan Murray if he would divulge what his hand injury was early in the season. And he admitted that he had an avulsion fracture in his non-shooting hand, almost the identical uh, injury that Domantis Sabonis had, except mm. for it was a light grade. So it's possible that he didn't have a displaced fracture where Domas had a complete the avulsion fractures where it basically the ligament pulls off the bone. But there is possibilities for that not to completely displace. And basically, they taped it back and held it together until the, the bone reformed and, and mm -hmm. you know sort of tightened it back up itself. Mm -hmm. He won't need surgery or anything. Um, over the Outside of that, I think the, the overwhelming sense was that everyone wants to play it back. Like, everyone wants to come back. They want to be part of what's happening here. They're excited about what's going on and they're looking forward to that's different the opportunity <laughs> I, I think it's very different yeah. yeah i mean trey lyles was very definitive last night that his number one priority is to come back to sacramento he said it again today multiple times he wants to be in sacramento what that looks like who knows mm -hmm. you know that could be like to throw numbers around unfortunately for clay uh, for for trey anytime you take a, a smaller contract like he did his last time we took a two-year five million dollar deal it's hard to go back up from that number you'll get yeah. a little bit more but you're not going to see a guy go from that to like a three-year 24. so i would expect him to be something more does like, he fall into those things where he can only get a certain percentage increase um not so much because i, I don't think he has bird rights at all i'm gonna okay. have to look at his contract but i'm almost positive it was a two-year five with a different team and so his previous contract, you can build off of it. He's probably looking at more like the biannual exception money, which is four million bucks a year. I could easily see a two-year twelve, uh, a two-year eight, or a three-year twelve, with the last year being like a team option, hmm. um, something like that. But I think he's proved himself. I'd like, do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, I, he's a really smart player. He's a good guy. He's a guy that even Mike Brown said is. Is an accountability guy. He has no problems walking up to someone on the court and telling him, hey, you need to be better. Like right now, we can't have you doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's really big. You know, he's so smart. And if he can play a small ball five and you get Sasha Vazenkov to come over and can play alongside him, you might not be the fleetest of, of teams. You know, you might be that not quick enough, but uh, that would be a really smart, really like high basketball IQ quality shooting club on, on the front line coming off the bench. Mm. Yeah, I'd love for Trey to come back. I think um Trey Miles. <laughs> I think he got a Kevin Lyles. He got a Trey Miles reference yesterday from Mike Breen. What? Yeah. Mm. We saw Mike Breen yesterday. We did. Walk right by us. Yeah. First did. time I've ever seen him. We don't yeah. get these opportunities often. We don't. Um but uh yeah I'd love to have Trey Lyles back, man. I think uh this is a guy that is as good as I, I thought he would be with this team. Remember last year at this time, I was like, you know, Trey Lyles might start at the four. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not against that. Yeah. Like, he's cool. 
I don't think he should start, but I think he, he absolutely plays a great role um, coming off the bench and being a guy who can play. We talk about small ball five. Sometimes he can get in there and play the four and having that versatility mm -hmm. to play a four or the five. Um, I think that that gives you more, you know, not to repeat it, but more versatility to be able to play certain styles. So um, I'd love to have him back. I, I hope, you know, he's in the the wheelhouse for King's market and things of that nature. Cause um, I think he, he was, he was big uh, to this team's success this year. Yeah. When you're building a team, especially when you have two star level players, you know that your, your big money is going to a couple of top end guys. Then you're going to have the next tier where you have these, you know, 15 to $20 million players and you can have one or two of those, sometimes three. Mm -hmm. That's where Kevin Herter fits in. It's where Harrison Barnes has fit in the past. It's where the Kings might go out and get somebody else. Then you have your mid-level exception guys and you only want one or two of those guys on your, on your team. But that again, right now is Rashawn Holmes and, and Malik Monk. Then you drop down to the $4 million player. Then you drop down to the minimum player and, and then hiding somewhere is your rookie, depending on, where they fit in the mm -hmm. salary structure. Of course, Keegan Murray's a little higher price rookie because he's a fourth pick, so he fits into a slightly higher one. But this year will be a lower price, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, this year the twenty fourth pick in the draft. I mean, that's a two million dollar player. So that's how a lot mm -hmm. of these teams are able to keep building, is that they have lower price players coming in on on those rookie scale deals. Mm -hmm. It's really hard when you keep bringing in eight, nine, ten million dollar rookies. Because they, they don't give you the bang for the buck. And so having guys that are deeper in the draft, you don't feel obligated to play them. You don't feel like mm -hmm. your investment is as high. Like James Weissman, I mean, he was costing the Warriors like $35, $40 million a year after luxury tax mm -hmm. and can't get on the court. But he's a $10 million a year player because he was the second pick in the draft. Yeah. And that's, a tr that's trouble. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can say the same about Marvin Bagley. Just having Marvin Bagley on your roster didn't really help you. And that's what they got for Marvin. Trey's been excellent. Like I, I think, as far as a, a top eight or nine man rotation guy, yeah, he does everything you need him to do. He's yeah. smart. He he plays defense. He's physical. He can rebound. Uh, he doesn't mind grabbing somebody by the throat when you need it. Literally, and yeah, we literally, figuratively, yeah. He's he's okay. <laughs> like mixing it up. He's also a guy who has a book in his hand all the time. He's always reading. He's just a different type of guy. And th that's good. You need all kinds of players in a locker room to really like make a, a good balanced locker room. We played some sound from HB uh, talking about he's he's going to just continue to operate as if he's a part of this team's core until he's told he's not. Uh, what did you think about that? And what do you think about Harrison's future with Sacramento? Man, did it change over the last two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what his future is in Sacramento. I mean, and I'm not saying that. He has no future in Sacramento. I'm saying I don't know. Uh, coming into this playoff series, I thought for sure they were going to try to lock him up to an extension. Even through the first couple of games, he missed that three-pointer and like all bets were off. And that's not because I blame him for the game four loss. I just felt like he took that hard. And then Mike Brown went away from him for two games. And mm -hmm. I was totally shocked to see Mike Brown go away from him and Davion Mitchell. Uh, you know, Terrence Davis had some nice moments as a defender in game six, as an offensive player in game seven. But I mean, the guy he was defending put up 50 and that's not to point all the fingers at Terrence Davis, but I was surprised it didn't go give Davion Mitchell a longer look and see if he could slow Steph down. That's uh, again, Steph did what he did. I, I still don't think that's why the Kings lost game seven. They lost game seven because they couldn't get an offensive rebound in the third quarter. I mean, a defensive rebound in the third quarter, and they gave the Warriors one chance after another, after another, after another. And I think that broke their spirit. Yeah, I think the, I think the, yeah, I, I completely agree. You, you saw it, I think, on their, the, the offensive end from them, the, the offensive rebounds, because, you know, it, obviously there's a missed shot. You feel like you did your job defensively. But you can't finish it. You can't get the rebound, or you have the plays where uh, uh, the, you have the long rebound and, and Domas fouled. You know, Kevin Looney ten feet from the basket, trying to get, trying to prevent him from getting another offensive rebound. 
And it felt like it took their toll when they finally did have an offensive offensive possession. It feels like it took the, their toll on them on the offensive end. Their shots were coming up short. The offense got really lacked, lackadaisical. It got really slow. And the whole, for lack of a better word, vibe was just shot. The crowd was gone. The crowd was moaning like, oh, my God, this is happening again. And it, you, you, could, you kind of felt it. Yeah, I fully agree. I mean, I, when you're playing defense the whole time, it just takes the wind out of your sails. Mm -hmm. And like I, I'll point out, the the Warriors in the third quarter, man, Andrew Wiggins shot 0 of 7. You know, Steph Curry, 5 of 12. I mean, that's not bad, but it's also not great. You know, they shot 40% uh, from the field. They shot 33% from three. It's not like they had this overwhelming quarter. The difference is, is they they took 30 shots and the Kings took 21. Mm. And so the back breaking, you know, going out there and trying to rebound, they had 13 offensive rebounds in the third quarter alone. They had two in the first half. So the Kings had them like right where they wanted them. They were up what two or were they up three going and coming out of the half. Two. Yeah. Yeah. And then it just, it, it was one gut punch after another. And I'm not, this is, a hundred percent. I do not blame Domas at all. Like Domas was sitting there doing everything he could to like tie up Looney. They were fighting in the post. It's not like he, he didn't have a body on somebody or something, but it felt like every single rebound came out long mm -hmm. and a bunch of them just flew right out to Looney. Mm -hmm. You're just like, I can't believe that that shot just, it hits a rim caroms over the top of the Kings and right to Looney every time. And I'm not saying that Looney didn't do his work. Looney did his work. But that's where the guards and the forwards need to be diving in and getting that second layer rebound. These were not rebounds under the basket. These were not a box out issue by Domas. These were long rebounds because they kept missing their three-point shots. Again, they missed eight threes in the third quarter. And I bet you almost every single one of those threes, they got the rebound. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was hard to watch. And then, of course, you know, they're only down six, right, in the closing seconds of the third. Regardless of how badly it went, they're still right in the game. And then I thought that that was a bad call uh, on the Clay Thompson four-point play. Mm -hmm. I thought Draymond Green, like, had a moving screen that was oh, clear in front of everybody. And, and then <laughs> Terrence tried to fight around it, lost his balance, kicks Clay. I don't have any problem with the actual foul itself. Because yeah. he did hit his leg. I even the kick out, I, I don't buy any of that. The early one on Keegan Murray on the three from the corner was absolute trash. Where they oh, called yeah, that was bad. The they called him, foul. but yeah. I don't think it, this game had a lot to do with uh, officiating. I think it realistically, it had to do with the ball just bouncing the wrong way in the third quarter. The Kings not figuring out a way to stop that rebounding disadvantage. And then you lost your spirit coming into the fourth. They go scoreless in the first like three and a half minutes of the fourth, and it was over. Wow. Hey, um, I want to play a quick game with you that um, Sarah and Jake played with us last night on, on Sports Sunday of stay or leave. And just okay. a gut feeling. And we'll start with Harrison Barnes. Stay or leave. I think he's staying. I think he's leaving. I'm going to say... I came in 75 25. I leave 25 75. Hmm. So I'd say 25% wow. chance that he's wow. back. And, hmm. but I don't know. Like you need, you know, I, I'd like to tell you that, you know, again, Demonis Sabonis had the worst series of his career because that's what a lot of people are putting it out there. To me, like Demonis Sabonis is great because he has spacing and shooters all around him. In fact, the Harrison Barnes shot like 25% in the series. That Kevin Herter shot like 20%. The Keegan Murray shot 375 mm. but one of eight in the first three games. Like they just, they were able to collapse on Domas because their shooters weren't hitting their shots. Mm. And, and I think it's that cut and dry. They couldn't hit shots for the series. And Domas, like there, if you just clog the lane and surround him, there's not a whole lot he can do. I wonder before you continue, mm -hmm. how much of that was a game plan from Steve? Like they're not gonna, they're not gonna hit 15, 16, 17 threes every night. We'll try to survive the ones that they do. Maybe we lose those games, but this is how we're playing. We're going to force them to hit threes. And if they don't, we're gonna beat them. 
If they do, it's going to be tough to win, which is funny because I think the one game that the Kings did hit threes, they lost. Yeah, I think that was the Harrison Barnes game, right? Game six, they hit threes too. Game six, yeah, yeah, yeah. Game six too. That's that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think they they shoot thirty thirty point six percent from three on the series. Thir- you said thirty point six as a team, and they shot yeah. well like thirty seven during the season, right? Yeah, yeah, that almost thirty eight. Harrison Barnes shot twenty four percent. Keegan Murray thirty seven five twenty point five for Kevin Herter. Davion Mitchell twenty five point nine. Trey Lyles thirty three point three percent. Even Trey was down low, uh, 35.3% from Terrence Davis, um, 33.3% from Fox, which is right in line with his standard season, and 33.3% for uh, for Monk. Mm -hmm. Like all of them shot below their averages, every Mm -hmm. single one of them. And a lot of them were wide open, and you got to hit those. Uh, But like if you want to blame Sabonis for having like a lack of, of, of assists, I mean, it's just pretty straight up. He didn't have any assists because no one hit their shots. Mm. Like that's not the way it works. Like he, the team as a team, they shot forty two point nine percent from the field. This is what it, it was an incredible offense coming into this. Just mm. bad. Um, next one, Terrence Davis, stay or stay or leave. I think he's gone. I mean, I think there's potential for him to come back on a minimum deal, but that's kind of where I'm at with him. I don't think that he's performed all that well i don't think he's been quick to pick up on things and the kings have used other options i still think that you can like the kings will look for an athletic guy like him and 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 bring in somebody to try to fill some of that role um but just i don't know that he did enough or that was able to sort of stay out of the doghouse with mike brown for making mistakes and so my guess would be that he finds a spot where he can play more minutes Got one more for you. All right. Rashawn Holmes. They're going to do everything in their power to make sure that they find a home for him this summer. Hmm. The Kings played 13 out of 14 healthy players during the playoffs. Rashawn Holmes was Mm. one player who did not receive a single second of playing time. Rashawn Holmes was on the second, second row. Yeah. He was on the second row. I feel for him. Um, I like, I don't know how he could have really helped though in this series maybe like as a rebounder but uh and, and i'll continue like i don't think chemezi metu will be back um yeah so, we didn't, i don't think we yeah we and i think we both said he's he's gone on too yeah i think uh matthew delavadova will either retire and go into coaching or go back to the abl for a year but i would assume that that's probably his last run um Outside of that, who else do we have? Uh, well, Delhi was fun while it lasted. <laughs> yeah. De- Delhi seemed to ignite like an excitement yeah. in the fan yeah. base and on the team. Yeah, absolutely. They seemed to love that dude. Yeah, I felt I, really bad for him when I saw him walking around oh, down in the air like been, that. Yeah. That just looked terrible. Just oh, and then get out of the cast, Alex. Alex will. I don't think yeah. we'll be back. I don't think yeah. Alex will be back. I mean, so that's a lot. It's a lot of changes. That's a lot of roster spots like, that are up we, for grabs. We can we can look back at this seven game series, and and you know talk about who played, who didn't. The you know the 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 pros and the cons. Chemezi Metu played a role in the Kings winning games this year. Mm-hmm. You know, throughout the course of the regular season, um, obviously. Trey Lyles did Harrison Barnes did, you know, some of these guys that we're talking about Terrence Davis did some of these guys that we're talking about may not have played a major factor in this series, but they did play a major factor at various points Mm -hmm. during the season. These are losses. Like don't get that like confused. Losing them is going to be tough. You're going to have to find replacements. And this is the other thing about um, being on a team and especially being in the NBA about this. It really, we said so many times this year, these guys love each other. At least it seems that way, right? They love playing uh, the game, you know, as a unit. They love being on the same team. They love being teammates. They love the road trips and all this other stuff. And one of the reasons why moments like yesterday hurts so much is because they know it's not going to be this way. Mm-hmm. Whether it's two guys or five guys, they're not going to play together anymore. They're not going to play as a team anymore. And, you know, that's what that's what is, is upsetting for, you know, a lot of guys in, in these situations is they know they're going to go out there 
And when they start the season next year, it's going to be it's going to be some new guys, some new faces. And you got to hope they can recreate that same type of chemistry with each other. But there's no guarantee. So, yeah, I think be tough. Malik had the the line last night that I thought was so spectacular. He said, we all wanted the same things. We all wanted everyone to succeed. Hmm. And that's what he thought made this team so special. Trey Lyles talked about this today. I thought this Trey Lyles, like I, I dig Trey Lyles, like. Again, we talk about vibes. His vibe behind the scenes is so mellow, so chill, but also like forceful. Like you, you get, you don't want to cross Trey. He's really, really bright. But he said today during his, uh, his exit interview that De'Aaron Fox invited everyone out to his house for, for a birthday party, for his birthday party in December. And Trey Lyle said, that's the first time I've ever been invited to a teammate's house. It's the first time I've ever gone to a teammate's house and had dinner. Mm. He's like, this group, we love each other. We are like all in it. And I thought that that was interesting because that's that it was actually kind of surprising mm. that they hadn't had situations with teammates before where he'd been invited somewhere. But he's also not one of the top six guys on a rotation. You know, he's not one of the buddy guys that, you know, like Malik and, and De'Aaron. So not everyone always gets invited, but he did in this situation. And I think a lot of guys did and that maybe wouldn't have been invited before. And it just built the, the camaraderie even more. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was interesting. Yeah. This has been a fun season with these guys. They are a really good group. And I, I hate to see that like some of these guys won't be back, but that's the nature of the business. You love Trey's vibe. I love Malik's. Oh, I Malik. I, I is, did too. Yeah. Malik's legit. I think my second favorite player in the entire league. I, I, I love that dude. I don't think they will do anything. I don't think he'll do anything. Is there anything that could be done as far as like his contract and making sure he's he's no? They just gotta wait till the next year and hope that. Well, that he's going to be in the same exact situation that they were in with uh, with Rashawn Holmes, where if they don't have salary cap space, the best they can do is that weird early bird where it's like 11, uh, a, a salary starting around 11 million bucks and they can go off of that. So if they don't have true cap space with him because they only signed him to a two year deal, uh, you really they made a mistake there. They should have tried to get him for three. It's possible he wouldn't sign for three. Mm. Uh, but if you could have got him to sign a three-year deal, then you could have worked an extension off of that. Uh, in, in after his second season, you could have extended him with a much higher pay. Uh, but because you didn't do that, now he doesn't have true Larry Bird rights. He has early bird rights. Even if he becomes a free agent next after next season, you you don't really have bird rights to him. So is it is it one of those things where can you you can't go over your cap to sign him? No, th oh. exactly. That's what bird rights. So bird rights are that you can circumvent the cap. You can go as high as you want. Right. And, and not worry about, you know, your place in the in uh, the salary cap standing. But that's only for players who are with the team for three years or come to a team with a contract that is three years or more. It's sort of like the Sabonis situation. Sabonis has a four year deal, but and the Kings could extend him this summer, but that's a whole nother gray area about like how much you can give him and stuff like that. In his fourth year, he you can sign him for as much as you want. Mm -hmm. And so like a lot of guys on the Kings are in that same situation. The Kings could, like Chemezi Metu has been with the team long enough that they could actually extend him some sort of contract. But um, like some of these other guys, they haven't. Uh, even Terrence Davis, I'd have to look, but the way that he came to the team gave him he was basically building off of a two year deal with Toronto. Then he signs another two year with the Kings. So it ends up being part of the same contract. So it's possible that he could, uh, they could go over the cap with, they could not worry about the cap and use bird rights with him um, or not use an exception. But uh, Malik is going to be a little different. Hmm. Malik and Domas the same. It's, it's next year, right? Yeah. Next summer. So <laughs> this might sound dumb, <laughs> couldn't you sign Malik first? Because if you sign Malik first, wouldn't that technically fit under the cap? And then you sign. It's like why LeBron used to wait like two weeks into free agency right. to well, sign contracts. Tip, yes, but again, players are assigned a cap hold figure. And so Domas's cap hold figure, because he's 
he's based off of a 19.4 million dollar gotcha. salary yeah. will be probably like 30 million dollars well that more. sucks well, yeah yeah the other thing about that too i don't know if it's this simplistic but 30 think, million dollars of imaginary that's trash that's a horrible rule i wish they pay me 30 million dollars of imaginary <laughs> <laughs> well they're not paying anybody it's just, well, it's just holding there. Yeah. it's just like yeah. it's a, it's honestly a, it's could a just prop. hold 30 million dollars for me well, see they well, could do something though are. where they get like they get monk on like another sort of two million dollar uh, two-year deal but then one year is a, 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 a player or team option mm -hmm. then if he opts out now he's got three years with the same club mm -hmm. then gotcha. you can sign him to bird extension you can use a bird rights and get him to a a higher salary, longer term deal type stuff. Gotcha. Maybe, maybe it's too simplistic to think about it, but um, my thought is, wouldn't the, isn't the cap going up significantly by next off season? So mm -hmm. what looks like they can only offer them, I'm just throwing out a number. What looks like they can only offer them 11 a year right now. Yeah. Next but, year it might be 16 a year. No, for sure. But like 16 is the new 11 though. Yeah. Like that's the, that's the, but Man, that's gotta, the difference. You got to get them before. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the they realize It's also whatever. like the beauty of Herder's contract. It's a four year 65 and you got to do locked up that when the, con when the, uh, the salary cap goes way up high, mm -hmm. you still have him locked in at a reasonable rate. I mean, I think, Year four for him is like 19 million, which mm -hmm. in today's NBA is probably going to be like an 11 or 12 million dollar player. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, it should be pretty, pretty easy to work with his contract no matter what. And, you know, it's, it's like how you have to structure your salary. It's the NBA is super top heavy. And then, you know, it's like, it's like the NFL, like the quarterbacks make 35, 40 million. But then dude number 48 on the roster is making a couple of hundred thousand. And if he gets hurt, you just flush him down the toilet and go get yourself another one. It's really brutal to watch because NFL players like the disparity between who makes money and who doesn't is huge. Uh, we'll come back. We will talk more about the Sacramento Kings with our 1320 Kings insider. James Ham is dealing with Casey brought to you by Sky River Casino. Get in on the action. Sky River Casino is the place to play with over 2,000 of the newest slot machines and over 80 table games. Sky's the limit if you're 21 and over at Sky River Casino. More here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Um, This wouldn't go on the show, I guess, but did you guys see what happened with the uh, with Major League Baseball and the A's where they – propaganda 101, where they – what they did with the home run video. So on the broadcast, they're in the right field bleachers. There's a bunch of like bed sheets and signs that say "sell the team." Oh, Fisher, Fisher yeah, 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 sell the team. Like owner suck. All, there's a bunch of them, right? Mm -hmm. So on the broadcast, some guy for the A's hits a home run. You see all that goes in the right field. On MLB's highlights, they zoomed in on the ball. So you can't see mm. the sell the team signs and all this other stuff. That's garbage. <laughs> it's like, embarrassing do too. For the next two years, three years, like on every play, because they're going to be all over the stadium. Like, what are you going to do? And they're going to, they're Major League Baseball is going to try to strong arm Las Vegas right now because Las Vegas, is like, hey, like in reality, they would just love an expansion team. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't really want the A's. Who who wants the A's? Because you got an owner who's cheap and horrible and is just in this to grab cash. So unless you get them there and then hope that someone buys a team from Fisher, which means Fisher would have to sell, then like, why would you want them? It's like, why would you want the Maloofs? Some Maloofs proved that they couldn't afford a team. Hmm. Now, this guy can't afford a team because he's one of the richest owners in the game, but that still doesn't change the point that he doesn't. He doesn't try to make this team good at all. I mean, like they just had Rooker win AL player uh, player of the week, right? Because mm -hmm. he's hitting all these home runs. He's leading the league in OPS. And uh, he's, I think he's got nine home runs and 22 RBI. Like he might as well have like a, like a purple sticker with a 25 cent price tag on him at a yard sale because that dude's just, he's raised his value where he could be gone tomorrow. That's who they are. They're just the worst, cheap. Uh, you know, this is Major League, the movie, all over again. It's just horrible. 
By the way, Jesse, great job. The ESPN Twitter account had 1.5 million impressions. Uh, Last month? During the yeah, during the, the during the month of April, the playoff run. I had to pull up a bunch of playoff, a bunch of social media numbers for our team. Thanks for giving me stuff to post. That's you. Yeah. Oh yeah, very nice. Very very this is, nice. This is funny. I'm looking at I'm on Spot Track and looking at projected cap space, <laughs> and the Kings are at ten with twenty three million dollars in cap space. The Mavericks are at eleventh with twenty one. And then it just falls to 13 million. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. like 13 million, 7 million, like it's like 10 teams that have cap space. There's not a lot of also teams. great job, Leezy. Leezy, our uh yeah, yeah, big up Leezy, our Instagram account is up eight percent because of the work that you you're doing over there, man. So thank you. Ironically enough, the Lakers mm-hmm. are projected out almost 30 million dollars in cap space and lazy you you uh mentioned you would jump on board and help out on the king's beat i, I will take you up on that this this off season yeah you get the videos at the same place i'm sure you noticed that already <laughs> you pull the videos right i gave him a, our stream yard access oh yeah so he can have the high quality videos and um yeah you can get king's beat stuff there um uh, why would someone ask if the kings are in a rebuild <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Pinoy Mamba. It's just I, I'm not sure happening. what to say to you. A guy at Deadspin wants my attention so bad. <laughs> I, I saw him. So uh, bad. I saw him re- respond to the tweet that's going crazy right now. He wants got, my attention. Going crazy. So bad. I don't even know what you're talking about. This is he's I don't know like Karin, he's a he's a writer at Deadspin. He he's a fine dude. Like he he's done the podcast before. Like he he just has this weird like thing with Sacramento. Like he wrote an article today just shitting all over Mike Brown. And it's like I told you Mike Brown was going to blow it. Like I told you he tricked off a 2-0 lead. It's like hold up. Like how can Sacramento be trash? And they blew a two zero lead. Like they can't like both can't be true. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but he criticized just every it's he it's weird. And now mm. he, him and Draymond are from the same part of Michigan. And so he mm. he rides kind of weird. Here with our 1320 Kings insider James Ham is the Kings. Uh, unfortunately, uh, wrapped up their media obligations today. Anything else? Uh, obviously, Harrison was a big focal point today. I do love, um, and I don't know if you asked him, but I, I I read your tweet on the air. I do love that Dre that 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 Domas had absolutely nothing to say about Draymond's podcast and <laughs> shaking hands and all of that. I I absolutely love that. You know what? I, like, don't get this the wrong way. And I, I mean, maybe it gets clipped and then I, I get roasted for this. 95.7 is not watching us. Anymore, um, so it's okay. Like respect is earned. And the fact that the fifth best player, maybe the sixth best player on on a great team uh, wants, Dre, uh, wants to call out Domas, that's fine. But he's also the dude who got suspended for a game for stomping on that guy's chest. I mean, you look at Sabonis. Sabonis is out there with a black eye. Mm. He's out there with a bruised sternum. He's been beaten, like, mercifully. Like, it, I can't imagine that Sabonis didn't say something to Looney on the way off the court, like, respect. Like, great game. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But I also, like, why does Draymond Green deserve that? He's the most disruptive force for that team. Like, and not in a good way. Bro, you punched your teammate in the face. Kill you, the respect talk for now. Yeah. Like, relax. Yeah, like, I, I don't get it. Like, uh, some of the players were out there hugging guys, and and that's that's who they want to be personally. Right. But that's okay to not be that way. Right. It's okay to be, like, I'm upset that we lost and walk off the court. And It's not disrespect. Like, you go back any other era, there isn't all this hugging and craziness on the court. That's right. But no, like, that happens in this era. But if mm-hmm. I'm if I'm any of the Kings players, I'm not hugging that guy. Like he played the fool the whole entire series. Like 
Did you see the Harrison interaction on Sean's video? I didn't watch that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have to. I have. We we have to play oh, yeah, it now. Pull, pull it up, man. We we we, we can uh, we can pull it up. Uh, like like I yeah. like I like I said earlier, uh, James. I mean, it's not that it's not that big of a deal. Like if if yeah if I have a son, I would teach my son. Hey, after the after the game, you know, go dap up with those guys or whatever the case may be. How I would go about it. I'd probably dap up with a lot of those guys. That's how I would do it. But if somebody didn't want to do that, or if I'm on the Warriors and somebody didn't want to shake my hand or anything like that, or all right, that's fine. Like it's not that big of a deal. Like people make this big old thing about something that's not really that serious. He didn't go up and sucker punch you. He didn't go spin your fame, disrespect you in that way. He just chose not to engage in any uh, handshaking afterwards. All right, keep it moving. And then the next day, when he was asked about, it, he didn't say nothing about you. He's like, I- "I'm not, I'm not here to talk about that." Yeah, he don't have to like you. He don't have to like you. He don't even have to respect you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. You don't have to do none of that. Yeah. His job is to go out there and play basketball and try and win games for his team. And you know, you don't want him doing anything nefarious or trying to hurt somebody. As long as he's not doing that, he doesn't have to like you. He don't have to respect you. I'm sorry your feelings are hurt by that, but he ain't got to like you. Casey, I've got podcasts to download. I can't I can't do it, Draymond. Yeah. I I'm got podcasts. Quite you. frankly, thank you. I lost a lot of respect for him. So as your as your so so watch so uh, uh, I'll, I'll walk the the radio audience through this. There's there's Draymond. He's clearly seeking out Harrison, who's embracing Steph. Now look at this. All right, now watch. He just st- he's just in his ear. And 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 Harrison is essentially putting up with it. He's just yapping in his ear, talking four thousand miles a minute. And Harrison is just like, "All right, bro. Like, I'm here. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening." And then he, okay, okay all right, bye. <laughs> there was no. There's a phone. Usually, when some of that happens, somebody be like, "Respect, bro. Much love." Yeah, that's not what Didn't happened. Say a word. Just... That is not what happened. <laughs> He literally, like, he just wanted to get away from him. I don't think I'm overstating anything here. He's like, oh, uh, all right, yep, whatever. Yeah, that was, like, such a dismissal, like. he He's literally holding on to him. <laughs> this is a stu- He's He's such a, he's su- this is such an act. <laughs> he's such an act. Yeah. Had a hell of a game five. My God, this dude is an act. I'll tell you, I was uh, in the tunnel after the game. Um, and I, number one, I caught up with Harry Giles, uh, which, oh, man, that's awesome. What a pop he got. Yeah. Yeah, man, awesome. what a good dude. Yeah. I really do hope that he's so able great. to find himself back in the league. He's only yeah. 25. Wow. I love how much Sacramento loves him. Yeah. I, went I over, absolutely love that. I, I look, I, just, you can get a camp invite. <laughs> I he agree. Get, he can get a camp invite. Yeah. Talk about a dude who can pass. Like mm-hmm. I went to give him uh like uh we like gave each other five and like and then we hugged it out in the hallway. And I'm like, man, I forgot how big your hands are. <laughs> and he just started laughing. Oh, you know. And I'm like, <laughs> like I, that dude has like Kawhi Leonard size hands, and he's <laughs> such a gregarious good dude. And just uh yeah, I hope he's back in the league. But I also went to walk down the hallway and Harrison is leaning up against a wall talking to Andre Iguodala and like having a long conversation. And I didn't go butt in, but I, you know, uh, said goodnight to Harrison and, um, uh, yeah, it's intense, man. And, and I feel for Harrison. Like I, I asked him today about, you know, like, what does he want his legacy? If he, if this is it, he's like, man, you make it sound like I'm dying. <laughs> and, you know, it was this funny moment, but it's like, yeah, well, I, I mean, as far as a basketball player in Sacramento, you may have, like, and th- that's not to be mean, but like my 13th season in covering this team, like I've seen so many players come and go. It's, it's not even funny. Like there have been guys who've been here a lot longer than Harrison that just, they disappear, they vanish. You never see them again. And I, I hope that he's able to like, whether it's here in Sacramento or somewhere else, like I've always said, he's a guy that like down the road, he's not going to have a problem being a solid vet who comes off the bench and does whatever it is you're asking mm-hmm. a lot like Andre Iguodala. Like he'll be able to take on that mantle. So if you do sign him and bring him back, it's not like you're you're giving him a starting job for the next three years or something. Wow. So and, and there was also like Kent Bazemore was in the hallway. It was good to see a lot of like former Kings. Kent Bazemore spent right. a lot of time. He was. 
and for this series. I saw him games one and game two. And, and then Kyrie courtside. Shout out Kyrie. Yeah. Out here. What did you did you investigate it all? Like, why was Kyrie here? <laughs> no, and I'll be honest. Like my where I sit, my seat. He was behind the stanchion, so I had no view of him. I never saw him. I could see his shoes, but he was straight Wait, across really? from us. Yeah, he's straight yeah. across from us. But where Basket I sit, the, way, the basketball James stanchion was right there. Like if you move to the right a little bit, you can see yeah, him. So visually, see James him. couldn't. He knew he was there. He just couldn't see him. Let's yeah, see. yeah, I couldn't Wait, see him. Yeah. I see. Went side to side. Yeah. Him and his daughter were there. I think. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um. Yeah. Can I you just... text Monty? Hey, are we signing Kyrie? You should shoot him that note <laughs> yeah. real quick. Did you meet with Kyrie Irving last night? Yeah, did you meet up with Kyrie? <laughs> now, the funny thing about it, James, I talked about it. I think this team, and this is way easier said than done. I think they need a Kyrie like score. That's what the playoffs kind of showed me because they were essentially a two trick pony, maybe. It was either Fox and Monk going one on one to the basket, your two guards, two of your smallest people on your on your on your team, or it was trying to finagle an uh, open three for Herder, Murray, Mitchell, or Barnes. They had nobody, and I know it sounds weird because Fox and Monk can't do this, but they had nobody with any size that could create their own shot. And like I said. If they had a Kyrie like player, now Kyrie then he's the same size, but I think that's the elevation they need. Whether they go get him, whether Keegan Murray develops that, they need Fox needs help to where like in that starting unit of somebody that can get their own shot, create their own shot, not only creating their own shot, but creating opportunities to get to the foul line. One of the one of the better two of the better games they had this year in the series, excuse me, was Malik Monk able to get to the line. And it really felt like if it wasn't Monk or Fox, they couldn't get no free throws. And that's a way in the playoffs. We saw the we saw the Warriors do it in the third quarter. And in the third quarter of game five as well, they were able to live at the line because they were able to create inside the arc. And if Sabonis isn't going to be a guy that you can dump the ball down to, then he's going to be able to score. If you continue to have him like up top creating, you're going to need somebody that can get you an easy bucket. And obviously, uh, offensive talent like Kyrie, everybody would love that type of player. But I think that's I, I looked at it as they, they need one more guy that they can go to for, you know, Fox and Monk need a breather. It's not all on their shoulders. I can see that. I also say that, like, during the regular season, Harrison Barnes got to the free free throw line a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin Herter created for others more than people think he Average like over three assists mm-hmm. a game. Mm-hmm. Like there, mm-hmm. there are guys that create for this team. And then I'm also like, I told you guys before, the the one type of player that really bothers Demonte Sabonis is that big, strong, like the dude who just pushes back. Mm-hmm. Another and rocks the loony <laughs> and the Stephen Adams type. Yeah. So how many of those guys are left in the league? And the answer is not that many. Mm-hmm. And that guy's torn up almost everyone the entire year. The The difference is in this is that you got to see Domas play against the same guy for seven straight games. And and not only that, a guy who has all this crazy playoff experience that's been there before, who doesn't have to score at all, mm-hmm. who doesn't have to take any of that responsibility on at all, and then was able to, like, I think the biggest thing was his passing ability that Looney flashed in this series. Every game that he, I believe, every game that he had more than three assists, they won. And it might have even been four assists where every game, he, like when he was passing the ball, it just makes it tough. So I don't know. I, I don't want to take, like, if the Kings would have played anyone else in the first round, I think we probably would have had a different result. Hmm. Just because no one else has a player that that is going to give him fits like Steven Adams or like... uh like Ke- uh, Kevon Looney. It stood out to me that De'Aaron, this was last night, yesterday, that De'Aaron mentioned, I think he was asked the difference, or maybe if he noticed the difference in playoff basketball, and he immediately said the physicality. He, he said, you can get away with 
a lot more. He didn't say it was too physical or, or he said you can get away with a lot more in the playoffs mm -hmm. than you can in the regular season. And that 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 stood out to me because um, we felt like we saw it. We felt like that's what was happening uh, in De'Aaron. First thing, yeah, the physicality is very different in the playoffs. I'm going to correct him, though, because I think he's slightly wrong. If you are a physical team, you get away with it. Mm. That's what the Boston Celtics do. Mm. The Boston Celtics push you all game long. Marcus Smart, all of their guys, they're into you. They're physical. If you prove that you can be that physical, I think what Fox felt was this was the first time that he'd been to the playoffs and realized that that's what the physicality level looks like. Mm. That's what the physicality level looks like for a 55-win team. And so I think he's going to take that. They're going to learn from this experience and you're going to see them be a lot more physical. They now know what everyone meant that like, Hey, you guys are soft or Hey, you guys aren't physical enough. He now knows what that means. He, I don't think he knew before everyone kept saying you're not physical enough. And you're like, okay, what do I need to do to be more physical? Like, Hey, I can't go run and push somebody. Mm -hmm. He now learned what that means. I think this guy's going to average 27 28 points per game next year mm. i think what this has done for his career is just a launching point he'll come back a better shooter he'll come back yeah. a, a a better a more rested person because he will no longer have an infant at home <laughs> um he will just he'll have a little toddler but an infant's different i think he'll just come back and he'll be ready he now knows this offseason what he needs to do and the other guy that i really think took that to heart is Kevin Herter, who I think he talked about it today. I need to be in better shape. Hmm. I think Kevin Herter hmm. was came into this season and was, he's in good shape. He's not in elite go to the second, third round of the playoff shape. And I think he learned that this year, that the pace of play, what he's being asked to do as a guy coming off of screens, like that's what I think a lot of this was the the physicality how hard the kings were playing on the defensive end it really did take the legs out on the offensive end mm. they need to be in better shape from top to bottom and i i think that this is something that this team you look at every single one of kevin herter's like back-to-backs or three games in four nights those are the games where he kind of disappeared and he'll work on that and he'll become back a better player this this offseason just by getting in better shape just by being uh, in the weight room more than just shooting. And, and I think a lot of these guys are going to realize that as well. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And that's one of the exciting parts about this team moving forward in, in the specific components. These guys, I think are going to get better. They're going to improve on their game. I agree with you hundred percent about De'Aaron Fox. I think he's the type of guy that is going to add something new to his game. You know, he, he's he been perfecting that mid-range for the last year, year and a half. Now he's got that down. I think he's going to look to extend that range a little bit now and have a, a go-to shot from three. And know that, you know, I'm not a three-point shooter. I'm not trying to be like Dale Ellis out here, but I'm going to add that to my game where that's just going to open up everything else as far as attacking the basket. DeMonte Sabonis. He's going to add that 15-foot jump shot to his game. We talked about last summer with him and Lethal Shooter. Yeah, he's working on it, but in my opinion, to become a knockdown shooter, that takes summers, not just one summer. That takes a couple of summers to, to get to that point. He's going to continue to work on that and add things to his game. And you just mentioned Kevin Herter. I think it was an eye-opener for him, too. I think he's going to add things to his game. So I look at all these guys, and I trust that they're going to do things this offseason, not resting on their laurels. They're going to they're gonna go out there and trying to get better at their game in, in a number of different aspects. Yeah. And I think, you know, you, the one guy you didn't bring up there was Keegan. And I think yeah. Keegan, like I asked him today, like, how are you going to take, we saw flashes of things that you can do, but how are you going to be able to step into a role where you can force that, where you are a guy who's getting more shots, who, who's not, who's not asking nicely for more shots, but demanding it. Mm -hmm. And then I think mm -hmm. the Kings, like we talked about this coming into the draft. We talked about this early in the season. Keegan's a four that plays three. Can he be a three that plays four? Mm -hmm. Can they redefine his body this off season? If they can do that, it changes everything for this roster. Mm -hmm. Because then having a guy like Sasha 
having a guy like Trey Lyles and then having another guy like not this specific player, but having another guy like Jared Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. Now you got mm -hmm. three guys that can play the four and the five and Keegan can give you more minutes at the three. That changes a lot of things for this team. And so I think there's going to be a lot of things that we see different, different next year. I'm, I think Sasha's name is going to come up a lot uh, over the course of the next few weeks, few months, whole off season. Is that likely or do you have a feel for it's like you gave a percentage on Harrison Barnes. Do you have a percentage on Sasha and how impactful is that? They've gone like full court press with him. So they sent Jay Triano over mm -hmm. at uh all-star break. And then during the final four, they sent Monty over. Uh, and I think Phil Jabor went with them. Um, like the, they've put the full court press on him. And I don't know what that means. I don't know how much they want to spend on him because he, again, is a guy that like his contract because he's, uh, he was drafted so long ago, he no longer fits into the rookie constraint. Uh, like, like there's only so much you can pay a rookie. You mm -hmm. can pay him 20% more than what like the salary slot is for his year, for his spot in that particular draft. Mm -hmm. Right. So if a guy is scheduled to make $1 million as the 28th pick, you can give him 1.2 if you want. You can give him a 20% bump on it. Now, when it comes to a guy like Sasha, he falls in the same category that Bogdan Bogdanovich did, where he had been out of the draft for three years, and now he can sign for more money. But the Kings would still have to fit him into a salary slot. When they had Bogdanovich, they had cap space, so they were able to give him a three-year 27. They don't have that kind of money to spend on a guy who they don't know what he's going to look like in, a, in the NBA game. So, like, do they have to give him the biannual exception of $4 million? That's what he wanted last year, and they didn't give it to him. Mm. So I think that that's going to be, like, the negotiation. Now he's probably going to win another MVP. Um, there's a bunch of MVPs that you can win <laughs> during the season. Uh, he's in different leagues. Like, there's Euro League, and then there's Greek League. Um, he could have, like, two MVPs by the time he becomes a free agent. Mm. And it's going to be, well, by the time he they get to the negotiating window, and it's going to be whether or not the Kings can – talk him into coming over for a lesser role in Sacramento. Okay. Interesting. Talk him over for a lesser role in Sacramento. L like, but so clearly they see him as an impactful player. Yeah. But he's not replacing Harrison Barnes. If Harrison isn't here. Mm. Well, it I depends mean, on how you see it, what you think Keegan is. I think like, it's what you talk about. Uh, if yeah. you think Keegan can be a three, maybe you might be able to put Sasha at the four. Maybe. But if you don't think Keegan can be a three and he's a four, I don't know. Sasha could be an NBA three. Yeah. What, no, he three. can't be. He can't be an NBA three. What you're hoping is it like best case scenario is that he's like similar to Bojan Bogdanovic. That's what you're hoping. Okay. Not Bogdan, Bojan. Yeah. That I got he's you. similar to that type of player. He's smart. He's physical. He's really broad through the shoulders. Um, you know, he's a, he's a solid rebounder, eight rebounds a game over there, but he's doing eight rebounds a game in like, I don't know, like 35 to 38 minutes. So that's not great. And then he's a he's a flat out knockdown shooter and he doesn't need a dribble. He's like, I'm not going to say he's like clay, but the way he moves off the ball, gets open, catches the ball and releases it is like clay. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I'm not saying he's going to be as good as clay. Big like clay, shoot like Steph. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, everyone was saying. thinking it. Everybody <laughs> was thinking it. Give me a break. Uh, that's James Ham. Uh, 